Hi everyone, so this is my uh, next vlog and before I start I'd like to slightly apologise, I have a cold so I sound a little bit nasally right now um, which isn't ideal but I said that I would uh, do my vlog today so I'm going to stick to that and still continue <laughs> to do it despite my crazy voice um, and I'll get back into health, the health of nurses when I get more into my um into my vlog so um the topic I'd like to talk about today is basically how to become a registered nurse and how I became a registered nurse so at school um I studied uh the sciences so when I was in year so I'll basically start from how it all began to where I am now um and this is mainly for um New Zealand um, New Zealand students or um, people wanting to um, go into a health profession. Um, I've given advice like this to, um, I, I used to do tutoring for the sciences um, while I was up in Auckland and while I was still studying. It was like a part-time job and um, so I'd give advice like um, this to those students as well. I had, a, I had an awesome student that wanted to become a uh, chiropractor. So she's on her way to doing that, which is really cool. Uh, so that's awesome. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. So at school, um, I studied the sciences. Uh, in year 13, I did chem and bio. I knew I wanted to get into some type of health profession. So I knew chemistry and biology would be the best way to go. Um, I attempted to do physics, which was the third science in year 12. So I did three sciences in year 12. I dropped physics. <laughs> Because it's, it wasn't my thing, let's just say. It was, I found it extremely difficult. Uh, and I kind of prioritised the chemistry and the biology. Uh, which is important um, to study um, if you want to go into healthcare. Uh, so, but in saying that, however, if you, don't, if you don't have a high school diploma or if you didn't sit the, you know, the year 12, year 13 exams... There are still options if you want to go to university to become a health professional or do one of the professional programs, uh, or if you don't meet the requirements, there are always uh, pathways. So pathways that you can go through to then meet those requirements and then make it through. And it's always possible. I've seen people do it. I've seen people, um, um what you'd call mature students, they do certain papers to meet the requirements to sit uh to they sit their exams so they can then further on and go into even nursing pharmacy medicine uh any of those type of uh those professional programs and it's entirely possible like it, you can do it if you can believe in yourself so um basically i'm trying to say don't be discouraged uh if you hadn't uh say met those school requirements. Um, I didn't actually start studying nursing until about 18, 19, 20, probably like three or four years until after I finished high school. Uh, so, you know, I if you don't know what you want to do yet when you finish high school, take a bit of time, think about it. Um, you know, there's no issue there. You don't have to go straight into university after high school like a lot of people um, will often say. Or maybe pressure from parents or, or peers, something like that. Teachers, uh, just uh, trust in yourself and um, use a bit of intuition and in what, what you really want to do with your life. So, uh, what I was also going to say was, so I was going to go into how I became a registered nurse. So I uh, applied uh, to uh, Auckland University of Technology, which is called AUT, and they do an excellent nursing program there. So it's a Bachelor of Health Science, which is fairly broad, but then they also have you major in nursing. So it's in nursing, so then you're eligible to sit your state exams to become a nurse after you've completed it. So once I did my uh, Bachelor of Health Science in nursing, I then sat the Nursing Council state exam, and there are two parts to that exam. So uh, there is the mental health and addiction section and the uh, general nursing section. 
So you have to pass both of those to work in each of those um, specialties, I guess you would call them. I don't really know. Uh, and following that, so following your state exam, uh, you find out if you pass or not, and then you apply under the, you can sit it, you can sit it more than once, and then you can apply under the NSP or NEPP program. So NSP is a Nursing Entry to Specialist program, which comes under only mental health and addictions, I believe, fr from what I know, mental health and addictions. Um, and that's what I chose. I'm really passionate about mental health, so that's the pathway I chose. So I applied to the uh, to the DHB that I'm working at now, at the moment, and I got the job, which I was absolutely stoked about. I didn't actually expect to. I was quite shocked. I was really happy. And so now I'm uh, living down in the South Island and working there. Now, also what happens with the... Um, the nursing entry to specialty program or the NEPP program. What NEPP program is say if you wanted to go into general nursing or medical, surgical, cardiology, renal, liver, uh, oncology, any of those type of fields where you are doing general nursing, uh, which is excellent as well. I did some of my placements. Well, I did one of my placements at a, a renal and liver ward and it was I found it excellent I learned so much and possibly in the future I would like to go on and go into general nursing which is possible as well so if you are applying under the NSP program know that you can always go into um, general nursing afterwards now apologies for the sniffing I've just got this terrible cold it's awful <laughs> Um, anyway, so the great thing about the NSP and the NEPP program is that you actually continue to study as well. So you are offered the job and so you are, you are working uh, 0 0.8 uh, and you are also completing a postgraduate certificate. So which is excellent because you actually get to learn more you learn a lot more about the area and specialty that you're working in. So, and that is run through the University of Auckland, which I think I mentioned in one of my other vlogs. Uh, and I'm starting that next next week. So I'm enrolled in starting that next week, which I'm really, really excited about. Uh, I heard, I've heard from many people that it's a great program. Now, um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is... Uh, so any tips, like tips that I would give to people, like I've only been working at uh, my my workplace for about a month now. And so the tips that I would give to any new grad nurse who's doing NEPP or NSP, so basically a baby nurse, <laughs> the new nurses, um, practice evidence-based practice. Um, so, for example, from academic journals or, or any peer-reviewed research, that's the most important thing, one of the most important things. The other thing is listen to the experienced nurses. They, they have seen, they, they've, been, they've been around for a long time in the wards, they've seen a lot, they know a lot, they know the clients very well, so always listen to the experienced nurses. Uh, we are also given preceptors, so people that will uh, make sure that we are doing the correct thing um, as a team with the other colleagues and also for the clients. So the preceptors are there to support you and they, they also have a wealth of knowledge regarding nursing and uh, the, the specialty that you've chosen. So, and we also uh, are provided with supervisors. So this is mainly for our other new grad nurses' well-being and um, throughout your career in nursing. E even if you are not a new grad, you can still have those supervisors and you can basically speak to them about any problems or any issues that you're going through and it's 100% confidential. So they're there to talk to you about 
any problems you have. And there's also group supervision. So the new nurses, new grade nurses can also share their experiences about, about their workplace, their ward, what they've been going through. And so it's, I guess it would be great to hear from other new nurses who are going through the same thing that you are. So it's something to relate to. And then you can share ideas about how to kind of get through those difficult times, which are inevitable and they always will be. Um, You know, life isn't perfect. We always go through difficult times. So the best way is to find a way to, uh, you know, alleviate, alleviate those difficult times. And what I was also going to say is the importance of teamwork. So as nurses, we, we, generally work in a team in a ward and so we all need to communicate well with each other so communication is a huge thing between all health professionals so you've got your um multidisciplinary team meetings where you have the psychologists the doctors the nurses uh the clients family sometimes and we all communicate with each other and that's a key factor in the path to recovery. Another factor is when you're on the ward doing your shifts, teamwork needs to be involved. You need to communicate with your, with the other nurses and with any of the other health professionals on the ward. Uh, so basically work well with your team and everything will go okay. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, now, so another thing I was going to talk about was taking constructive criticism well. So, as health professionals, um, anyone who is a health professional at the moment, a student, anyone, there is always going to be criticism about what you're doing, and it's not to say that there's anything that you're doing anything bad or there's anything wrong. It is literally so you can improve upon your practice, so you can be a better nurse. It's it's helpful. So, what I would like to mention in that sense is that. If you are a new grad nurse, do not take offence to uh, any criticism that you may receive because it is all there to help. It will help you uh, further your career and you can always, can uh, you know, ask questions. How can I improve upon this? Um, how am I going at the moment? Uh, is there anything I need to do to make this client more comfortable? Or how is my communication, etc.? And... I think that's a really important part because it's all part of learning and as health professionals we never stop learning even if you're an experienced nurse I spoke to a very experienced nurse recently and she said to me that she never stops learning and so that that's really important to realize that you know never stop learning we don't know everything uh yeah basically that's it and uh, another aspect I would like to talk about is never place judgment upon the clients. So if you're a nurse and you are treating a client or speaking to a client who may have differing views to you or you may hold some views close to yourself, whether it be religious, political, anything, you cannot let that impact your work. So you cannot let your personal beliefs on another impact your practice. So basically what I'm saying is simply don't judge other people, whether they're your colleagues or your uh, clients, clients as in patients. Uh, you know, we're all human beings at the end of the day. We all have had our experiences in life, which made us who we are today. So... Uh, I believe that we shouldn't place judgment upon others and we should know our own beliefs so then we can actually accept them and realize them so we don't push them upon others. So yeah, never stop learning and learn about, you know, be willing to learn about the individual that you're working with. And uh, so basically why to choose mental health and addictions is the next thing I would like to speak about. So 
um, mental health is a very rewarding, so rewarding. When you see, when you see clients re- get rehabilitated and they move on to uh, the community and they get better, it's just the most rewarding thing in the world. It makes you feel like that you've actually made a change in someone's life. And also New Zealand has one of the highest rates of suicide in the world. So we do need more mental health nurses. And I know it can be I know it can be slightly uh, taboo to talk about mental illness because it is something that many people are slightly I wouldn't like to say afraid, but you know, it's not a topic that often people talk about. Physical health is an appropriate topic to talk about. Mental health not so much. So you know, in saying that, it's helping those who need it most, whether the topic be taboo or not. Uh, and in my next vlog, I'm actually going to do a bit of research on certain statistics of uh, of the mental health um, system in New Zealand and the state, the, the state of our current mental health system and the clients and individuals who are experiencing uh, somewhat of a mental illness. So, um, lastly, just remember, if you are a registered nurse or you're a student nurse, uh, people in society trust nurses. We want to maintain trust in the profession. So, whether it's your personal life or you're outside of the ward, you're not working, you are always maintain. You always have to maintain that trust in the profession. Uh, be an advocate for others. So, practice good good health in yourself try the best you can I guess that's the advice that I've gotten and stay healthy uh so yeah I've got a cold at the moment which is quite terrible but luckily I've got two days off which is quite good so it hasn't impacted on my work but I am uh currently drinking heaps of fluids took my cold drill what else is there vitamins vitamin c vitamin c actually doesn't improve colds unless before you've got the cold. However, it's a vitamin, so I'm going to say that it, it'll it help me and feel better somehow. Uh, and rest. Yeah. <laughs> so that's basically what I would like to say about staying healthy as a nurse. Look after yourself, you know. Uh, limit your alcohol intake. Uh, do practice what you preach is what that is something that I've learned and that I would like to do is take better care of myself and when you're young you've just graduated you've moved out of home it can be quite difficult to uh look after yourself the way that say your parents have but um it's great to make an effort and actually you know do those things um look after yourself because if you're healthy you can look after others in a in a better way and um, I'd also like to say so most of my vlogs are up on the daily blog.co.nz so yeah check out the daily blog it's pretty cool there's a lot of good stories on there uh, and my next vlog is going to be about one of my greatest friends uh, Ashna Siraj uh, she is another health professional. She's a pharmacist and she went to Auckland Uni. She loves pharmacy and she recently um, shared her views with me regarding how pharmacists can improve upon the treatment and responsibility of clients, especially those who uh, are experiencing a um, experiencing mental illness or who have been diagnosed with mental illness. So that will be the topic of my next vlog. So I hope you enjoyed this and yeah, thanks for listening everyone. Bye.